I love searching the internet for new books and I have been knee deep into the depths of the internet to find debut authors work, especially fantasy. And this video is me showing you the six books that I found by debut fantasy authors that I think both you and I need to read because they just sound that good. These Deathless Shores by P. H. Lowe is a adult fantasy retelling of Captain Hook's origin story. It is a story about cruelty, the loss of innocence and the power of stories. It was published on the 19th of July of this year. Jordan was once a lost boy, she's now 21 and exiled to the real world. She's still having withdrawal from the addictive magic of dust from her childhood. With nothing left to lose, Jordan returns to the island and its stories of pirates in war and the heartlessness of youth. Intent on facing Peter one last time but on her own terms and if that makes her the villain so be it. <gasps> like I am a sucker for Peter Pan hook retellings. This is so tangibly dark and magical and Mm, it's gonna be such a good read and perfect for fall, you guys. P.H. Lowe is a Rizzling and Locust nominated American Malaysian writer and poet. Their shorter work was published in Reactor, Strange Horizon, and Fantasy Magazine, among others. Mistress of Lies by K.M. Enright is the first book in a dark fantasy romance chillery. It was published on the 13th of August. The daughter of a powerful but disgraced blood worker, Shan Leclerc, has been building her network of spies and gathering every scrap of power that she could. Now to protect her brother, she assassinates her father and takes the place as head of family and this is only the beginning of her revenge. Samuel is a bastard with a terrible gift. When he stumbles upon the first victim of a magical serial killer, he is dragged into the world of magic, which is something he's tried very hard to avoid, and he's pulled deeply into the ravenous court of the Vampire King. Tasked by the King to discover the identity of the killer, Shan and Samuel and mysterious royal blood worker Isaac, they find themselves being entangled in ways they had not seen coming. But Shan's plans are treacherous, and as she lures Samuel into a complicated web of desires, he must decide then if the good of the nation is worth the cost of his soul. Like, what do you mean? And I could for the life of me not shorten this blurb. I, like, how would you explain this in five sentences? Because <laughs> I couldn't. And what I will fly through and be obsessed with. Like, what do you mean dark magic? What do you mean blood hoarders? What do you mean a vampire king? What do you mean a badass girl on a quest for revenge? Where she mentioned in the blurb that she assassinates her father. Mm. And she has a web of spies. Count me in. KM Enride is an American Filipino writer, and when he's not writing, you can find him playing video games, cooking, or listening to Broadway musicals. He currently lives in New Jersey with his spouse and their cat, Suko. I love having a little bit about the authors, especially now because they're debut authors and you might not know that much about them, like with the authors you've been following for years and years. So I just thought it would be very nice to hear a little bit about them as well throughout the video. The Scarlet Throne by Amy Liu came out last week and me being excited is an understatement. Vinza is a living goddess chosen by the gods to dispense both mercy and punishment to the people from her place on the Scarlet Throne. But her reign hides a deadly secret. Rather than channeling the wisdom of an immortal dead tie, she harbors a demon. When a new girl Meda is chosen to take over her position, Binza strikes a deal with the demon. To magnify his power and help her wrest the power from the priestesses, she has to sacrifice humans life. She'll do anything not to end back up on the streets, forgotten and alone. Deals with demons are rarely so simple, but how much of her humanity is she willing to trade in in her quest for power? A dark, heart-thumping political epic fantasy full of scheming demons and morally grey herons, talking cats, cutthroat priests, a delicious tale of power and corruption. So yeah, does it make sense why I can't get my hands down from excitement over this book? Taken from the website, Amy Lowe is currently living in Kuala Lumpur. She graduated with a degree in linguistics and she's currently pursuing a PhD in the same subject. She's often found dreaming up worlds of feral gods and even more feral girls. Again, and how can you not be excited? This sounds so deliciously good. She sounds like 
I want to be her friend, truly, this sounds amazing. Rewitched by Lucy Jane Wood is coming out on the 19th of September, so tomorrow. This is actually the one book that popped up on my TikTok for you page and also in one of the videos I'd made. One person said I had to read this, so it's here on the list. Even though I know she has quite a big following, this book just sound perfect for fall, so it had to be in this video. I also hadn't realized that Lucy is also a YouTuber, so she actually has a very big online presence. So I am, when I'm done reading this book, I will do nothing more more than watch all her videos in a post reading blues but just because I probably won't be able to get enough of her in her world. Belladonna Blackthorn hasn't lost her magical spark but she hasn't seen it in a while either. Balancing work at her beloved Luna books while also protecting it from her toxic boss who's running it into the ground all the while concealing her witchcraft from all the non-witches around her. Belle is burned out. Protecting the potential of her magic is the last thing on her mind. But when her 30th birthday bring around a summon from the coven and a trial to test her worthiness as a witch, Belle risks losing her magic forever with the month of October to fix things. Even though there are signs that dark forces are working against her, Belle will need all the help she can get. From the women in her life, an unlikely mentor figure, and even a infuriatingly handsome watchman sworn to protect her with found family and slowborn romance and an uplifting measures of self-love this is the cozy annual fall read that you have been waiting for so yes 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 sign me up witches bookstores infuriatingly handsome watchmen say no more literally say no more where She Is Wrath by Emily Varga comes out on the 29th of October. A sweeping Pakistani romantic retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo, where one girl seek revenge against everyone that has betrayed her, even the boy she loved. Framed for a crime she didn't commit, Dania counts down the days in prison until she can exact revenge on Mazen, the boy responsible for her downfall, the one boy that she loved but still can't forget. When she discovers the fellow prisoner may have the key to exact her revenge, a stolen gin treasure, they execute a daring escape together trying to find this hidden treasure. Armed with dark magic and now a new identity, but seeking revenge becomes a complicated game of cat and mouse, especially when an undeniable fire still burns between her and Mazen, and the power to destroy her enemies has a price. As Dania falls deeper into her web of traps and lies, she risks losing her humanity to her fight for vengeance and her heart to the only boy she's ever loved. This just sounds like a story one could swallow up whole. I can't wait to follow Dania's journey for revenge and possibly love. Emily Varger has a love for getting lost in bookstores and eating big portions of rice and to watch reality TV. She has lived all over the world but is currently calling Western Canada her home where she lives with her family and their menagerie of animals. When Emily is not writing, she works as a family lawyer where she's learned more about storytelling than she'd ever expected. Doesn't Emily sound like the nicest and coolest person? Like I also want to be friends with Emily. Like these authors sound so cool. So Emily, if you need an extra set of hands with the, the menagerie of animals, please do not hesitate to call. I will be there. The Teller of Small Fortunes by Julie Long comes out on November the 5th. Julie Long is a Malaysian Chinese American fantasy writer. Julie graduated from Yale with a degree in political science and economics. So cool. She lives in San Francisco with her husband and their spoiled pop Kaya. Oh. When she's not writing, she enjoys making unnecessary spreadsheets and flambéing things. Tao is an immigrant fortune teller, traveling between villages with her trusty mule as company. She only tells small fortunes. Will it hail next week? Which boy will the barmaid kiss? And when the cow will cow? She knows from bitter experience that telling big fortunes comes with big consequences. Even if it is a lonely life, it is better than the one she left behind. But a small fortune unexpectedly becomes something bigger. When a semi-reformed thief and an ex-mercenary recruit to enter a desperate search for a lost child. Soon they're joined by a baker who loves adventure and, of course, a slightly magical cat. 
Tao sets down a new path with her new friends who are as big hearted as her fortunes are small. But as she lowers her walls, the shadows from her past come closing in. And she has to decide if she's willing to risk everything for the family she didn't know she could have. Tell me that doesn't sound like the literal best book you're gonna read in November. A slightly magical cat and found family and a fortune teller and oh, this sounds so good. I really want to know if any of you have picked up any of these books or are going to, so please share down in the comments if any of these books sounds like something for you. That was all for this video today. Hope you have a very lovely day. So thank you so much for watching. 